Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable weekend. Look, I'm here to talk about this Kyrie Irving thing. Not because I want to talk about the happenings in basketball and the NBA and what professional basketball players are doing, but I want to talk about it because of how certain people positioned in places that have been given to them by the system are immediately pouncing and painting narratives. Also, the media in general are doing what the media does. It's gotten to the point to where you have to scrutinize everything that's being reported in the media to verify and consult and to evaluate whether or not it's true or not. If you're not careful, you'll be triggered. You'll be pushed into a place of opinion and assessment based off of false accusations. And I'm going to show you how that works. But first, I'm going to deal with Stephen A. Smith and Charles Barkley. Both of them, you know how I feel about them, gave them business. So let me tell you something. Uh, Kyrie Irving and Stephen A. Smith and Charles Barkley on the other side represent the two diametric positions of my thinking as how I deal with black men. Uh, Kyrie Irving, whether I agree with him or not, I believe he's a brother out there trying to figure and find his way and do things based off of what he's been given and what he understands and what he knows. He's not... Uh, go along to get along. He's not uh, a system dude. He's a person that wants to think for himself. He won't, He's a person that's going to evaluate things and do what's best for him. And that upsets the system. So it upsets a lot of black people. You got to understand that was a bunch of people on the plantation that couldn't stand the, the radical thinking of the revolutionary mind of the, uh, of the, of the black slave that was talking about freedom. Um, they would sell you out quick because it disturbed the very notion, the idea of how things are supposed to work. It, you can be convinced that the very thing that's crushing you, it's supposed to be what works. It's supposed to be what you support. You will be put in a position, if you're not careful, where you'll be supporting the very thing that's working towards your demise. And it happened uh, as far back as slavery. And it's happening in how we look at and how we judge other black people based on that behavior. He's stupid. He's crazy. He's all these things. No, he's thinking for himself and he's evaluating how he's being handled and how he's being treated. And he doesn't have to settle for it. His skill set and his value to the sport allows him a voice that a lot of kids don't have. And he's using it and it's freaking everybody out. But let me explain to you the the, the diametric philosophies behind the Barclays and the Stephen A. Smiths versus the Kyrie Irvings. Um, you're never going to see me maligned, uh, maligned, disrespect, uh, criticize and critique a black man openly in public and attack him. Never going to see that unless, it, uh, especially not for moving autonomously in distinction from the system. You're never going to see me attack a black man because he doesn't want to participate in the system. You're never going to see me attack him because he's out there doing what white people don't like. You're never going to see that. Absolutely not. And even when I think he may be doing some things that is probably not good for the community, that's something for him and I to discuss in the background. There are things that I have seen of people you know that uh, I could sit up and I could put on blast, but it doesn't serve the overall... Um, progression of our people, it will be something personal. And I don't think we bury 
the entire movement behind personal things, but we got far too many people out there with platforms that love to do it. So on the flip side, I will go all out on clowns who have the melanin, but fight for the system with everything they got. Barkley said, Kyrie Irving can't be trusted. Kyrie Irving is, you know, someone that you can't depend on. Uh, Stephen A. Smith says he's an idiot. Uh, why? Because when he simply posted something that uh, certain people had an issue with, he never made a statement. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But he never made an anti-Semitic statement. He actually never did. Matter of fact, he did the contrary. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But he was attacked. He was then uh, put in a position by the owner to this is what you're going to do or you don't get to play. See, and what happened is because he came out and he did a press release and he said, hey, I am not anti-Semitic. And he did what they asked him to do. And he went back to playing that they thought it was over. No, you tried to break me. You wanted to fold me over. You wanted to buck break me, basically. You wanted me to sit down and fold under the pressure of your wealthiness and your control and your power. And I, I know what you did to me. I, I, I'm on my way out. And now he has the leverage. He's a free agent at the end of the season. So in July, he can choose to go anywhere he wants to. And they won't get anything for it. So he's leveraging that. Now, if you want to get something for my talent, my value to the system, you're going to trade me now. Or I'm going to walk away and leave you with absolutely nothing in July. And so that's business. Nobody gets mad at anybody for doing business and looking out for themselves except when a black man does it and the system gets a black eye. That's the thing. So Stephen A. Smith and Charles Barkley are, are, are literally put in a position and a given a platform and a voice and paid handedly and heftily to sit up and keep blacks who want to do what Kyrie is doing in check, to paint them in a negative light, to create a narrative that they are troublemakers, to create a narrative that they aren't doing what they should be doing, and to sit up and lead a public assessment so that we see them in a way that the powers that be want us to see them. That's not how it should be, but that's often how it is. Now let's talk about the media in general. When the media is reporting on this, this is what I saw one media outlet put, that Kyrie Irving is now demanding a trade, and it goes on and says, Kyrie has had a very turbulent time in, 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 uh, in Brooklyn, and it says, get this, he recently went through a difficult period after making anti-Semitic statements. Now, the average person without thinking is automatically taking that. That's another planted seed that's actually inaccurate and it's providing a false narrative. He never made anti-Semitic statements. What he did is he posted a link to a book, to a movie, to a documentary. And everybody lost their mind. And he actually kept saying, you know, I'm posting something and, <clears throat> and I'm not anti-Semitic. So then to double down, not only did he not make anti-Semitic statements, he declared himself to be a Semite. That was also a problem. I didn't like that. But he declared himself to be a Semite. So it's kind of hard to be anti-Semitic when you are a Semite, a Semite, right? So, but... What is the media putting out? What is the media portraying? The media is portraying that he's anti-Semitic, he's done all this stuff, and he's a troublemaker. No, he won't bow down and flow with the system the way that they are used to it happening. And what happens is, the more that this happens, the more likely it will continue to happen with other players as they realize, I have value in this system. I bring value to this. I'm a commodity in this. Without me, there is no money. You're making money off my jersey sales. You're making ticket sales off of me putting my talent on the court. You're getting TV revenue from me putting my talent on the court. If I can sit up and I have the value in, in in my profession to where when I don't play, your ratings go down, your revenue goes down, then I definitely have value and I have a right to leverage that value. I don't have to play by the rules you want me to play by. I can play by the rules that protect my interests and are fair and true. 
And that is what Kyrie Irving is doing. Now, do I have to agree with everything that Kyrie Irving says, everything that Kyrie Irving does or it has ever done? No. What I can agree with is his right to look out for his best interest, his right to say this organization did not handle me well. This organization mishandled me. This organization has underpaid me market value, and it has, and now I want my money, but I don't want it from you because I don't like the way you treated me. Nobody in this entire world outside of professional athletes and people placed on this in this place where it's predominantly the black talent that creates the money and it's white wealth that houses the facility. Do you ever see anyone who's on a freaking job being mistreated by their boss and being told you don't get to leave, that's real selfish of you? Only in this sport where the wealthy elite are sitting up there and the system says this is how you do, you should be thankful that I'm giving you the opportunity to play basketball. The thing is, your ragged ass can't play basketball. People are paying to watch the game of basketball. They are paying to watch it at a high level. I'm one of the best to do it. I may be the best ball handler ever to step on the basketball court. I am a big shot maker. I have value. You're not going to mishandle me. And what Kyrie knows is the, the blueprint that Stephon Marbury created when he was dismissed and mishandled and chunked to the side by the NBA and then went to China, played, I don't forget how many years, won seven championships, became an icon, launched a shoe brand over there, making all kind of monies and rejuvenated his career. At a time, he was considered to be on the decline and past his prime. So he understands that there are other ways to do this. The NBA isn't the only thing. It's the juggernaut in the industry, but it's not the only way to get my thing across. I have a brand. I'm Kyrie Irving. People around the world know who I am. That's value. I'm going to leverage it. That's business. Anywhere else in the world, outside in the NFL and the NBA, that's considered business. It's only when the black man does it and the black, the white man and the white system gets the black eye that it's a problem. I'm calling bullshit. I'm telling Stephen A. Smith and Charles Barkley bullshit. You're mad because he didn't take the shot and he stood his ground. You're mad that he wouldn't easily back down off of something that he felt strongly about that upset a certain group of people that everybody cowers to. He has never, ever posted anything that resembles some form of hatred for another group. But you study trying to paint him as a hate monger. Well, I am as a per. I'm not nearly as big as Stephen A. Smith or Charles Barkley. I'm not big as any of these other cats out here that are taking shots at him, like like uh, Jason Whitlock. Let me tell you something, though. What I will do is use my little bitty platform to sit up and speak nothing but positivity and power and to straighten out the record. He did not in any way say anything uh, hateful. He did not in any way produce, produce a push or, uh, or promote hatred. He shared something that he had seen that at the level of his understanding was something worth sharing. When it became an issue, he made it very clear. I can't be anti-Semitic because I am a Semite. That's an issue. That's a problem. I got a right to speak my truth. You don't get to shut me down and force me into your narrative because your narrative is what you want to present to the world. And there's a new narrative emerging that challenges your narrative. You don't get to crush me into that. I get to choose and I get to speak on it. And I'm going to stand up as a part of of alt black news and as new black media I'm going to sit up and say good for Kyrie it's a damn shame that you got cats out there that are allowing the system to lace their pockets so that they can throw bombs social bombs emotional bombs into the black community and disrupt progress disrupt unity so that everything can stay the way it is it's a bunch of people that don't want to see change because they're winning in this system being counter measures to black progress well i'm gonna call that bullshit out every time i see it I don't care if it's a hundred times a week. I'm calling that out. So again, Stephen A. Smith, no, it's not idiotic. It's extremely 
astute. It's extremely wise. I, who in the hell else? Matter of fact, what's crazy about this is that Stephen A. Smith did the same thing when he felt he was underpaid. He voiced his opinion. He felt he was underpaid by uh, sports uh, ESPN. Now, they came with the bag. And the difference is there isn't 30 other ESPNs that Steven could have went to, so it wasn't as much leverage. But he could have went out to another another, another network. He could have went out to another situation. He could have created his own podcast and, and, and launched that and, and did real well at it, and they knew that. He had created a brand. And nobody's knocking the fact that he's created a brand. He's got a brand for himself. He's got a style. He's got his own thing. He has established that. And he leveraged it. But it's a problem when this young cat leveraged it because it moves against the system that lines your pocket. We don't need black men that's speaking from their pockets or their stomachs. We need black men that's speaking from their hearts and their love for themselves and their unapologetic blackness. The crazy thing is, if we were to stand together and we were to move together, everybody could eat. We wouldn't have to be dependent upon them for their money. We wouldn't have to be dependent upon them to sit up and display who we are to the world. I call bullshit. On that note, look, I'm getting right out of here. As you saw at the beginning of this video, we're in the middle of a fundraiser. If you believe in the work we're doing from our research, center to our think tank to our program development to our program implementation uh implementation uh on everything from socialization programs like black men lead to the work we're doing with young black women and young black girls domestic abuse childhood sexual abuse uh to mental health and addiction all of this stuff we've been doing for decades this isn't anything new if you follow me you know i've been around for a while this channel right here is 10 years old the one before it was older than that I've been doing this for a while. But anyway, show some love, show support. Click the link in the box or give through the organization's cash help. The work we do requires support. It requires unity. We need to come into ourselves. Stop trying to go out into the world and make them be what we should be being for ourselves. On that note, I'm out of here. Thanks so much for allowing me to steal a little bit of your time on the weekend. You guys have an unbelievable